Hey everyone, Louis here from Xeno. Today we explore how authentication works within our platform. Xeno has a native authentication feature equipped with pre-built logic, which makes managing logins and signups very simple and efficient to handle. You also have the option to create your own authentication workflows from scratch if your project requires anything different. But in this video, I explain everything you need to know to hit the ground running when it comes to authentication. Whenever you create a new workspace, you have the ability to let Xano create the user table as well as the default authentication endpoints for you. But since we're going to explore that in more detail, I'm going to leave it unchecked for now just to show you how easy it is to set them up. Now that we have our fresh workspace, we can go to our database and create our user table. And we're going to create two fields. The first one is going to be an email type. And we want to enforce that only unique emails are stored in this column. So we are going to add an index to it. And it's going to be a unique type to the email field. Great. And now we're going to create a password column. Awesome. Now we need to tell Xeno, uh, hey, this is the user table. So please generate tokens for the users that are stored in this table. And we do this by clicking on the three dots on the top right hand corner of your screen and going to settings and enable this authentication field over here. And now we can go to our API create a new API group and we're going to create a new endpoint. Here we have the option to uh, create many pre-built uh, default endpoints or even create one from scratch if you want to. I want to go here to authentication and create one for sign up. And here you can see the user table only because we enabled authentication for this table. And here you need to specify the unique uh, field of our user table, in our case is email, and also the column that stores the passwords for these users. And this endpoint is pretty straightforward. There are two inputs, one for email and one for password. Uh, in step one, we have a get record searching for any existing accounts with this um, provided email. Uh, and here we have a precondition. Uh, and the expression is the user equal to null. That means that if the user is not found in our database, go ahead. Otherwise, uh, throw an error with this error message. This account is already in use. If this expression is met, we move forward and we add a record to our user table with um, the values provided the input. And ultimately, we create an authentication token uh, for this user. And here we have some settings that we're going to be talking about in a minute. So now we will create our first user. When I click run, I'm provided a GWT token uh, for this new user. But if I am a return user, I'm not going to go through the signup uh, endpoint. I'm going to uh, go through the login endpoint. So we'll go ahead, click on Add API endpoint, authentication, of login for the stable user. And the auth login endpoint has some similarities with the auth signup endpoint, such as the inputs, uh, the get record in the first step. Uh, but the precondition now is if the user is different from null because the user needs to uh, be in our database or else uh, we're going to throw this error called uh, invalid credentials. And also we're going to uh, use this valid password function because the password's hashed and nobody can access a uh, password in the database within or outside the platform. And if the pass result is true, so if we have an account with that email and the password match, now create an authentication token. So now we explore the value inputs in the create authentication token function. And the first one is the database table uh, where we set the user table that we want to create tokens for. So if you haven't created a new user table uh, and you're still using the first one created, you don't have to worry about that. But if you have, you need to update uh, the latest version of the user table here. Uh, we can also add extras or claims. We're going to be talking about this in a second. 
And here is set expiration time for the token. And the value is provided in seconds. Uh, by default, we have 86,400 seconds, uh, which represents a day. Uh, you can use uh, whatever uh, value you want here. And if you want the token to never expire, you just leave it blank. Uh, bear in mind that you might need additional uh, security measures uh, if you want to go that route. And you, here you have to provide the ID of the user you want to create the token for. And here is getting from the uh, get record function. So that's why we are referring to the variable user.id. Now let's log in our user. Encrypted inside this GWT token, we have two pieces of information. The first one is the user's ID, and the second one is the expiration date. But what can I actually do with this auth token that is provided to me? Now, you can make requests to authenticated APIs, such as the last default authentication endpoint that we have that's called authme. We can see that these two API endpoints are public and this off me is private. And here we can see an indication that a token is required if you want to access the data in the response. And in the function stack, we only have a get record function that is fetching the record of the user based off the ID that is provided in the token. Here under off ID, uh, we can access the ID of the token and in this function, it should match the ID field of the user's table. If we click run and debug, now we can see a new box called auth token. And what this does is create a token on the fly for any user you have in your database for testing purposes. But what we're doing is that we're going to paste the auth token that we got from running the login endpoint. And you can see uh, information about my user. We don't have a lot of information, but you got the point. But if you're running this just to fetch a specific field inside the user record, you might not need this because you can also add claims or access to your token. So let me show you how you can do that. So in our users table, we are going to create a new field uh, that's going to be an enum and let's call it role. And we're going to have two values, that an admin user and a standard user. And let's say that this user is an admin. Cool. And now let's go back to our APIs. We need to do this for both our uh, sign up and login endpoints, but I'm going to do this for only for login just to show you how it works. Uh, so in our create authentication token function, we have a value input that's called extras. Uh, as explained by default, we have the user ID and the expiration date encrypted inside, but you can also uh, include any additional data. Uh, this is a JSON object, and because it's an object, we need to use the set filter to define the key value pair. So let's add the role um, as a key, and the value is going to be user uh, role, because I'm getting this role from the user's variable. We just need to make sure that the role field uh, is included in the output. And if we run, we get this out token. If we copy, and now let's create a new endpoint uh, called extras just to show you what we have. And now we need to um, enable authentication and you can click here or in the settings and go to authentication and user authentication enabled. When we do this, now the user needs to pass a token to be able to access the data in the response. So let's create a variable and the reference is going to be the authentication extras. So we're going to pull all the information that we have in the extras. Let's run, let's reset because I'm going to provide the auth token that we got from running the new login uh, endpoint. If we run, now we see that we have a role in the admin. You can use this information in your logic or maybe save um, database requests such as the get records or any other purpose in your use case. Now let's talk about stateless authentication. If you're handling authentication outside Xano, but you don't want your API endpoints to be public, wide open on the internet, you have the ability to create your um, custom authentication 
workflow using our native functions here under security. We have JWE encode and decode uh, or JWS uh, encode or decode. So you can leverage those to create your uh, custom authentication uh, mechanism. Or if you want to generate a token only based on email or any other uh, feud in your database, we can go ahead and delete this one, for example, and disable uh, these flows and create only based on the email. And you can also do that. And that's it for today. If you have any questions, feel free to leave it here in the comments below. Uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos like this. And if you want to learn more about our tool, you can visit our awesome community or refer to our documentation. And the support team is always here to help you. So see you in the next video.